We'll call the Newport City Council meeting to order from Monday, June 4th, 2018, 6.30 p.m. All members of the council are present. Others include James Johnson, James Johnson, our clerk treasurer, and Laura Dogan, our city manager. The next item is to approve the minutes of May 21st, 2018. Entertain a motion. I'll make the motion to do it May 21st, 2018. A motion to be made. Is there a second? I'll second. Made and seconded. Discussion on the minutes. Hearing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Next item, comments by members of the public. I don't see anything this evening. Then we'll move on. The next item will be NEK Stand Strong event request. Jess. Hi guys. Hi. So in your packet you found um, the event application for NEK Stand Strong. They're doing their second annual overdose awareness memorial walk. And that's scheduled for this Sunday, not Saturday. And you know it's this Saturday, but it's actually Sunday. Um, and Tara's here um, to give you a little bit of information about the event. So I'll turn it over to her. Hi, I'm Tara Patton. This is Travis. Um, we are part of the NEK Stand Strong doing the second annual opioid awareness memorial walk um, so we did it last year we had about a hundred people um, this year we have guest speaker Brandon Novak's coming up and then some local speakers um, Travis and a few other people and we are asking to waive the rental fee for the gazebo for that day and they did pay their $25 deposit with their application, which of course is required for everyone. And you'll also notice in their letter um, that they talked about their future. Um, they're hoping to continue doing this awareness walk, and they also mentioned that um, they're working on getting um, donations or fees for this that will help cover the rental next year. So they're working on a path to be self-sustainable, so I really like that about their application. They had given that some thought. Okay. Um. Sorry, <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. Okay, so uh, they filled out the event application, mm -hmm. and they went through. You reviewed everything with them, and the application is complete. Yep, and this is the second year that they've done this. It's it's hosted on a Sunday, which is great because it won't you know it um, impact the farmers market, which is hosted there as well. So that's good, um, and they. Uh, they, they completed all the requirements. So. Mm -hmm. And so, just some of the considerations that the council considers with, with every event. Mm -hmm. um, the event takes place within Newport City. Mm -hmm. It's compatible with, complements, and is not in competition with events hosted by the city. Mm -hmm. um, the event is open to the public, accessible to Newport City residents, and provides a service in a not, services in a non discriminatory manner. Yeah, definitely does yeah, that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the majority of funds raised at charity or fundraising events are used to support specific programs or services that benefit Newport City residents. That I would say yes. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that I would say. The event or organization is addressing a recognized community need. That's a definite. Mm -hmm. That's a definite. We know that. There is a substantial return on investment measured by economic impact or other tangible benefits associated with the partnership. That one, it, I mean, the benefit, I mean, it may not be monetarily, but if we yes. can get anyone off, I look at it, if we get anyone off opioids, we get them as a, um, that to me is a benefit to the community. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I look at that, that criteria right there. And then the event organizers experience qualifications and responsiveness responsiveness to promote a positive working relationship with the city. You worked with... Yep, and with they, they were great in the past. They didn't leave a mess or anything like that, so their track record is good. 
We so, don't have start this year, but Jennifer Harlow said that Royce Lancaster and Dave Jacobs will help with traffic, just people crossing. Okay. We have in the packet, we have the, uh, the map where we walk. It's the same as last year. I guess start doesn't, they don't do it anymore. Yeah, certain certain dissolved. Service dissolved? Yeah. Oh really? I didn't the volunteers, know. Yeah. Oh wow. So you actually okay, you started the gazebo and then you cross and walk along the bike. Right path. up here, right um, up. down to the water and back around. Yeah, okay, that's what you did. Mm -hmm. Same as last year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and this um, this was not required as part of their application because on their application they had anticipated number of people was 50 to 75. Right. So it's not technically considered a large event where they need council approval. This is a, a typical rental. The only reason they're here tonight is to request those waived fees. The waived fees. So I appreciate you submitting this. If your event starts to grow, there'll be a, another portion that we have to consider for next year. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Okay. Were there any uh, questions from council members? On this. Then, does the council wish the fee was what ninety five dollars? Mm -hmm. Do we wish to? What is your uh, pleasure as far as the fee? I would be pleased to make a motion to waive that fee. Okay. The motion's been made and seconded. Discussion on the motion. Um, once again, just account for it, Laura, in the special line item that we had designated the other fees. So this will come out of council special projects and about $95? Yes, the 95 okay. Just so that we can keep an accounting yeah. so we know in the future and the budget. Um, okay, anything else? Then, yes. Yes, uh, I, I'm only interested in the accounting part um, and also how we're using um, Jesse's time. Um, with regard to the accounting part, when Jesse and Laura first put in the budget for, la for this year and the next year, she had to envision uh, before this events policy went into effect that there would be events uh, and that the recreation department would swallow its portion of those events because that was in the budget already. So last year's budget, which we're still coming up to until June 30th, and next year's budget, which is already approved, she put in a budget that included taking care of events. Now I would say uh, for the next time a budget is arranged, that may be true that, that we have to renegotiate this, but right now you should not be taking money from special projects and paying Jess back, the rec department back, because that was already included in what she wanted. She had to envision there would be events and that it would cost something to clean up the park or do whatever um, it is. So number one, we should not be doing this accounting until not th this year, not next year, which the budget is already in for, but the following year. Otherwise, you're double dipping. And who's going to pay for this in the end? We are. The city's going to pay. She's getting, I'm sorry, the citizens are going to pay for this because the rec department isn't going to ask for any less money, and the special fund is going to need more money to pay everybody back eventually for the, this year and next year. And you can figure it out for the following year when the new budget comes. But the second thing I want to point out with regard to this is is this the way we want to spend Jess's time? Or did we want to spend it making programs for the children? She doesn't have, look at all the hours she now has to spend talking to the events people, filling, helping them fill out the form, fill, seeing whether or not the seven elements uh, of whether or not they should have some fee waived uh, are met. Uh, and then it's taking a lot more time be, uh, with you guys too to decide uh, whether or not, I mean, this is city council time, in addition to listening to me. So I'm saying you're wasting Jesse's time. It should be better put to other purposes. And two, this budget fudging that you're doing is just going to cost us more money for the next two years for no reason whatsoever. It was already in there. 
So it was not <laughs> in the budget. Yes. Yeah, so that, that's what I want to say. It was not in the budget to waive fees. The, her event programming is rec department events. It wasn't the cost of all these other programming. Well, how was it paid for? That previously. Practice. It was coming out of her budget in the past. Yeah, so now I, so now I'm doing I wanted an accounting tracking. And that's all it is is a tracking of the account. It's so that we can know in future years what we're waiving for fees. It's just an accounting. It's not it's not going to affect the bottom budget taxpayers. The budget's already been approved, the money's been collected. This is just an accounting within the budget to track it. And so that's what I wanted. We have an obligation to let the taxpayers know how their resources and funds are being spent. And this is how we're doing it. We did it last year. What was different last year is that we didn't have any account to take it out of. It was a hit to the rec department or the public works department or the police department. Now we're accounting for these in a much more um, fair and equitable way. When it comes time to do the budget next year, all of these figures will be taken into consideration by the council, and you'll have even better data to make your decisions. Regarding spending um, Jess's time, um, with events coming forward, they need to be coached and guided. You can't have people come forward who have never done this before and not realizing the magnitude of what the impacts are of the request. We're providing a service by doing this. Otherwise, um, you'll be surprised. You'll have unanticipated expenses. You'll have things that need to be taken care of that were not previously addressed. So as long as people want to do events and they're on city property, we have a responsibility to make sure there is a proactive plan and a cleanup plan and accountability after that. Otherwise, we're, we're going to be run amok. And, and, and you've been doing paperwork for the last few years anyway. And this actually simplifies and streamlines things for me and makes it a little bit more efficient. The better we get at this process, the more we practice it, the, the smoother it goes and it's actually easier for me to do that. Right. Um, and the other thing I want to remind everyone is that it's really difficult to think about this. Um, a lot of people were thinking about this as an expense thing. It's not the rec department having to spend money on you know, the trash and the bathroom impact. Those things cost money. For the most part, we're doing them already. There is a little bit additional impact, but the, the issue is the missed revenue. So if the rec department wants to continue to advance recreation in Newport, whether it means by a playground or adding programs back in, which means adding staff members or uh, manpower to the rec department to get all those things back that the community really wants, we have to have the money come from somewhere. And if it's not coming from the taxpayers, which would be how we would supplement that, we are trying to charge the users for their park use. So we're looking at this as missed revenue, not a hit to the expense line. It's actually missed revenue, which will then help our expense line. So it's a little bit backwards, but I'm going to have to think about it that all way. All right. We have a motion and a second. Then all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. The next item is authorization to file the DEC grant application. Um, this is a grant for uh, $6,000 that will go towards a hydro cedar um, that is uh, basically being required in municipalities, correct, Laura? Yeah. Um, I'd better let you do a little explanation. I gave you the. Can right. You, can you read that, please? Just read this email? Yeah. Okay, that'll do it. Okay, yeah. that'll be okay. The grant application is for a hydro seeder. A hydro seeder shoots out lime seed fertilizer and it helps grow in a short amount of time. This is needed as a result of the requirements for best management practices around the state criteria for stormwater. The grant is to A&R and is a maximum of 6000 It requires an 80% match. This is a piece of equipment that will be heavily used. So it's basically, what I was trying to get at was, it's a result of a whole storm, new stormwater regulations when, when you um, have road maintenance or construction. They want it to be vegetated as quickly as possible. And so. Questions? Um, did you have a chance to review everything? Yeah, so on here they'll reimburse up to 5,200, right? 
So if we have a 20% inclined. Is that up to 5,200 or is that to 6,000? Maximum reimbursement. 52 oh, there. Okay. So yeah. that means that if we took 10% of that, right? 20%? Does that put us up to the $6,000 amount? Is the $6,000 amount a fixed cost that we already know that somebody's going to pay? Or are we looking at the, um, at the other portion? Maximum reimbursement. For That's for that, that, oh. for that piece of okay. equipment. Okay, so $5,200. I think he thinks a price of one is going to be in the $6,800 range. And his vantage point is even if he has to spend between twelve and 1500 it's still a tremendous advantage for him. See, I was looking at this as that we really aren't applying for a piece of equipment yet that we could apply for any one of these pieces of equipment. Right now, that's the one he's focusing on. I think there is a trajectory and a, a logistical outlay. Yeah. Um, he's working with MWA on this effort as well. So that's where their planning has brought them at this point. Now, now, my understanding is this equipment has to be used specifically to mitigate runoff from our roadways and stuff that are adjacent to waterways. So. When I look at it, the waterways that I see that are adjacent to, you know, Prouty Bay on the Glen Road, I wish he was here because I'm wondering if that includes uh, Fern Street and School Street, uh, Hinman, which actually the runoff comes down onto the Glen Road and into the lake, or if it just has to be adjacent. But, um, but I got the impression that at this point, you're not asking for a specific piece of equipment yet. I think there's another application for that, right? This is just authorizing that, that we're can, interested in it. This is authorizing his, you're you are granting him authority to apply for a grant for purchasing right. a hydro cedar. Yes. Yeah. Or any piece of equipment there, but his, his focus is a hydro cedar. Correct. Okay. Oh, right, because there's the other equipment, but he wants right. the hydro cedar. Right. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right. Because this rollers. is just authorizing him to say, to apply for that, which is yes. really a different application. Right, but I've, you're right. There was other equipment. I focused on what he highlighted, the hydro cedar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My understanding of the storm on clean water will include probably involve for Street right. because yes. the way they're focusing on the entire... They're looking at storm water runoff. They're looking at the storm water, basically, and that would involve for and for And, you know, if you look up at Lake Champlain, the big, and in our lake especially, the, the biggest problem in our lake is phosphorus and that comes from the farms and it can also come from our treatment plant if our treatment plant overflow reserve puts certain actually the studies have shown that treatment plants in the entire state of Vermont is only about one percent of the entire so treatment plants I think it's one one or one and a half percent if I remember the, the figures um, so treatment plants are like one of the smallest it is, but it still has some total True, but it's one of the smallest as far as um, an adverse impact. It's more likely what's coming into the lake from the watershed, which is, we're a very small, small part of that. But So we would need a, a motion for this. I will make a motion to uh, approve the uh, application for the Rhodes Grant in aid program equipment purchase. A motion to be made. Is there a second? I'll second. Made and seconded. Discussion? Yes. Yeah. Are we currently enrolled in this program for any other in house equipment? I, I would assume that you apply for it as the opportunities come up. What do you mean enrolled in the program? Well, this is a program, this grant made right. program to buy equipment like this. Right. Is there any other equipment that we bought in the past that's been attributed this is, to this program? This is brand new. This is all part of the stormwater runoff initiative, mm -hmm. and I think that ANR is unrolling that because, from what I gather, it's a relatively new initiative. It's very expensive, <coughs> and they're trying to come up with ways to meet the, um, the demands that are put on. But hasn't there been a program like similar to this in the past where we've gotten equipment? We very well could have. I don't know okay. if it's this exact But it didn't have the same? Okay. I don't know. Well, municipal roads have been around for a long right. time. Right. Municipal mm -hmm. road grant. Right. But this one's focusing on clean water and storm water okay. mitigation. Yeah. 
Fire. But yeah, municipal road grants, I mean, that's been around for quite a long time, the municipal road act. But Karen? And probably you're thinking as well of the USDA community facilities grants that have purchased equipment uh, for the city. So those you have received. Yeah, and that we have, and that's separate from this. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Then all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. So Laura, we all need to, we all need to sign, right? Yes. Indeed. Indeed. He doesn't need to. He didn't need to sign it. I guess or certify it or anything. So I guess. Thank you. Okay. The next item is Northern Borders application update. Correct. Uh, resolution. And we have Karen Garrity. So, as you'll recall, we met a few weeks ago to discuss the application for the Northern Borders Regional Commission grant to do repairs on the boardwalk. And uh, Laura's going to pull up a PowerPoint so we go through this. The application has been submitted, um, but it's incorrect in that the Northern Borders uh, grant requirement requires that you own the piece of infrastructure that you're applying the money to. So, um, yeah, there we go. So, of course, as you know, what we're talking about is this boardwalk piece here, the, the infrastructure that um, was built some years ago and was priced out, and we'll look at the prices in a few minutes, uh, for repairs in 2009. It's a pretty extensive um, renovation. Uh, there's, there's several meaningful repairs that need to be done. Um, so the Northern Borders Grant allows for an application up to a half a million dollars uh, for, um, a, for a piece of infrastructure like this. So the next slide. Um, so for an eligible purpose, uh, this we applied for this as a piece of transportation uh, infrastructure, and um, which is one of the eligible uses for this grant application. Now, there was a question that came from the committees whether or not it could be considered a transportation um, piece of infrastructure. If it wasn't transportation, we would only be eligible for 250000 But the next slide will show how we define this. You'll see that their, their rationale that it might not be a, a piece of uh, transportation infrastructure was that, as you see from the uh, orange dots, there is a recreational path that parallels the boardwalk. Uh, the boardwalk is the green dots that you see there. What we pointed out was if you follow the orange dots, they lead you directly into four lanes of traffic right there on the sidewalk that empties out. And then you cross a railway track and you're sitting between two active railway lines on your bike with your children before you enter the bike path again going north. So we argued that the actual path that could be used for bikes and pedestrians really should be that boardwalk path because it keeps you out of traffic um, and it is a better transportation option for bikers and pedestrians. You still have an issue with the tracks, but you can't overcome that when you're crossing that body of water. Um, but it is a secure location, but it's not the same as being emptied out into really four lanes of traffic on a narrow sidewalk and then making that sharp left onto a railway track. So they agreed 
with that. So we are defined, this boardwalk project is defined as a piece of infrastructure. Um, so we are eligible for up to the half a million dollars. Um, the next slide. So this is where it says in the eligible in the eligible purpose is that grant recipients, in this instance would be the city as the applicant, must maintain ownership slash control over all investments made with NBRC funds. What control means is if you are the owner of this piece of infrastructure, you can lease it as long as you maintain control of it. But effectively, you have to be the owner. If you're applying for the grant at the end product, you have to be the owner of this. So what was not apparently understood at the beginning of the process was that the state was offering ownership of the boardwalk to the city. <clears throat> they are going to gift the boardwalk to the city. And what that does in this situation, because the grant requires a match. So you can imagine a match of a half a million dollar grant. It's at least a 20% match of $100,000. But the value of the boardwalk will count as the match because it's worth far more than $100,000. So in terms of cost to get the repairs done, there would be no cost to the city under this scenario. If you receive the grant for the repairs, and the match in receiving the gift from the state will cover the match that the city would have to put in. So the next issue is, um, and I think I need the next slide. So what we've done is we, we went to get the estimates. So what you're looking at on the left-hand side um, are the 2009 estimates of what the repairs would be, which was just a little under $300,000. We just received um, the update to pretty much the same repairs, and it's now up to 404000 So that's effectively the cost of the repairs as it's sitting right now. And um, you can really see when you go through the line items, it's really the settlement repairs where there's been a significant um, rise in cost. Um, some shoreline stabilization as well that's gone up substantially. And, um, you know, depending on what happens with the tariffs, uh, you know, we can only get quotes 10 days out now for steel and things like that. So, but it will be within this ballpark. And certainly the grant of a half a million will more than cover this. Um, so those are effectively what, and I, I'm happy to send this list to anybody who, who'd be happy to see it as well as the 2009 one, um, just for comparison. But this is effectively the estimated cost for the repairs. So the next slide. So just to point out, we were, was in a conversation today with the Vermont Land Trust Board of Directors with Jess and Andy Capello and talking about the future of the developments in Newport um, around the Bluffside Farm, around our lake, and the potential for adding um, value uh, to the downtown by owning this particular, by having the city own the boardwalk. And you can see in the yellow there to the left is where the city boardwalk would be. <coughs> On the right in the red, that is where the proposed location of the bridge from Prouty Beach over to the Bluffside Farm is. And as we talk about that, and we talk about this, um, the harbor master has talked in depth about the mooring fields that are available in this lake that have already been approved. We need landing locations for smaller boat craft. So we would look at that bridge over on the Bluffside Farm. Again, that's a separate project, also funded by Northern Borders. But we would look at putting in small docking facilities off of that bridge as well. But what we might want to consider doing, because we will have the funds to do it if, if this is approved, is on the next slide here, Laura. So your harbor master has started to look and assess the lakefront for possibilities for additional development. And in looking at the, the waterfront boardwalk, we could look at it installing floating piers for small craft rental um, and an access ramp. And so when you think about, we'll have the costs met for the repairs of the boardwalk, we'll have those costs met by the grant and the match of the grant, but what we're going to want to do is set up some new revenue streams going forward that will cover the cost of maintenance for this structure going forward. We have the opportunity, I think, and, and certainly the Harbor Master is just brimming with ideas on how to develop some small businesses along this lakefront that can really support um, a waterfront economy. 
and uh, look at developing a funding source, a revenue stream that will support uh, really the cost of maintaining this going forward. So because I know that's always been an issue is not only the cost of repairs to the boardwalk coming on the taxpayer, which certainly none of us want, um, but also the maintenance of it, like any other piece of equipment or any other facility that, that the city maintains as a recreational facility. So the issue before us at this point is that the resolution that you passed for the application uh, of the Northern Borders Fund is insufficient because it only refers to repairs to the boardwalk. It has to be a resolution that includes the acquisition and repairs of the boardwalk. So it has to include um, a statement by the council that the city is willing to acquire the boardwalk. Now, the acquisition piece would not come for, for a bit because the grant would be awarded. There's, there's some paperwork and things that need to happen you know, through October. And then the acquisition piece doesn't happen until the notice to proceed is issued by the Northern Borders Commission. And I also think... Right, but also there has to be, I think, legislative action, correct? From the state. From the state. Likely. The legislature yeah. next session would have to, yeah. I'm assuming they would have to have some sort of resolution. There would have to be some sort. So, yeah. it, so it's not like the acquisition, <clears throat> when you make this resolution, it's not like you acquire it tomorrow. There, you will acquire it before the end of the grant so that you show that match for the grant. Um, and we would certainly look very careful at the timing of that gift. Uh, so that the value of the match is coming in at the right time as the grant funds are being expended. You, you, have, to, you have to watch how you're spending and, and have a sufficient match against what you're expending. Um, but, you know, if you approve of this, we would certainly work with the state on that, and they would work with you on that as well. So that's sort of where we are with this at the moment. Um, it's a big, big that's consideration. I don't yeah. think so. I think that's it. Yeah. Some history. I guess that slide can show it. When they first built the boardwalk, see the two gazebos, that had to be repaired already. Yep. And that hasn't even moved since they fixed it. Um, they brought in, it was the same engineering company that did the update. Yep. They did Born. all that, Born yeah. Engineering. And so the repairs to that, I mean, it's not even moving. The problem with the whole thing is they didn't go to, I, get, I call it right of refusal or bedrock. That's the thing, they didn't go to bedrock. And that's what the engineer, when I have the chat with him to get you all the information, said that's what happened originally, is they didn't go So to, I call it right of refusal, whatever, or bedrock. You go back to the slide that shows the side-by-side -side comparisons. That's yeah. where you see, under the settlement repairs, that's where you begin to see the vertical piling replacement. That's where you see the cost jump from 48000 to 624. That's that's really where a lot of your cost is coming in, um, so that they can get that really firm. Yeah. So given, I just would like to say, given that we're in the process of doing um, uh, research with the VHB group on waterfront uh, infrastructure to connect Main Street better to the waterfront. This is kind of an opportunity that's fallen into our laps by virtue of the state reaching out, saying this is a possibility um, for us if, if the city is willing to take the, the boardwalk as a gift. The Northern Borders Fund only applies to the six northern counties of Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, but, but there's a fund for Vermont this year. Next year, the Northern Borders Fund will go statewide. So it will be a far more competitive fund. We anticipate a lot of that money going into Lake Champlain because of the need there. Um, so it's a, we're, we're in positioned in a good place, if ever there was a time to consider this, to acquire it with the repairs done under the grant, with the match being the value for the grant, um, and then a lead time to really cultivate both business and revenue streams to support it this would be the time because it's fitting into all of this resurgence of the lakefront activity that, that we're seeing. So that would be that last slide. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you want to look at? Nope, that's good. I think this also, yeah, that's okay, um, will allow people to not have to go through the state. They'd come to the city if they wanted an event right. on there, but it'd be a lot easier that's right. to have 
activity on the actual boardwalk because you would be dealing with the city versus the state and and they have a lot more restrictions a lot more than lot what more. we do exactly yeah um, it opens it up in terms of events um, to many more possibilities um, than the state can provide because it's your local ownership of that property so Mr. Schmidt. why was there such a decrease in the contract mobilization yeah, I wondered about that too. I can certainly ask. Um, I just actually got this today, um, but I could ask about that. I, I think they're trying to keep it within a ballpark figure for us, um, but it's a very good question. Um, I, I did see a couple of other areas that I, I was going to ask him about. Yeah, that you know, I, yeah. now they're required with a railroad flagger for sixteen thousand, and that wasn't in there before. Not that we wouldn't want to have one, but uh, it's just a few additional things. Yeah. Other questions from Council Member? <clears throat> so we need a motion to approve, it would be the new resolution that we had in that packet. Great. Um, this is all really wonderful news. I think that now is the time to apply because, I mean, like you were saying, when they open that up statewide, it's, yep. it's going to. I have a feeling that Lake Champlain will be priority over over us and um, yeah, there was confusion in the beginning with this yeah. whole. I mean, I was yeah. under the impression. I, I was, well, actually, Laura and I, when we, Laura, when we left the governor's office, we were in the impression it wasn't ownership at the time, yeah. and that was the whole clarification. Well, and I know where that comes from is that you can't you can't take ownership until you get the notice to proceed. Right. So the ownership is delayed. But it has to, when the grant goes in, there has to be the explicit uh, intent to acquire it. Um, and that's the piece that was missing. And that was a confusion. Yeah, that, that was the confusion. I think, I, but it was presented to the council as a repair. Right, because that was my impression too. Yeah. And that needed to come back as, no, it has to be acquisition and repair. Right. And that um, was confusion on yeah. my part. And yeah. the, the other piece to clarify is that it's a $500,000 grant, not a $250,000 grant. So when Jim keeps the minutes, he'll note those changes in the minutes. And the resolution wording is the exact same one that you signed before I changed the dates. Um, and I can see something else that I need to change on this one, which is um, at the city council meeting held on May 21st, that's, that should say June 4th. Um, but, um, so that's how this will work. It's just like the other one, but I can go print out another one really fast and put the correct date on. If you want to do that. So does yours say May 21st at the bottom? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Let me just fix that. The beauty of this, if you decide to take it on, it really does fit within this development of the recreational economy for Newport. Um, your Harbor Master has some really terrific ideas about utilizing that piece. He, he was explaining today about the types of boats coming in, the fact that we have to have a place for boats to really unload sewage, uh, depending on where they are. There's opportunities to, to sort of take these pieces of construction, both at left side and the um, boardwalk, and tweak it so that you don't have as much of a load on the public dock that we have currently. You have far more usage um, that, that can come the more we open it up. But it opens up the gazebos much to people who might want to yep. have musical events even beyond Wednesdays in the yeah. waterfront. And so when you have this summer leasing the green space, you then potentially, you know, in future years, you have the green space and you own the boardwalk for larger events and other things. So you know, it's, it's something to think about. And the annual maintenance, the original figure yeah. included all that green space yeah. the state does not want to turn. I mean, right. it will, it'll, they it'll, have it'll to be, maintain the Right, the space. annual maintenance would be less than what the estimates were. So it should be, in theory, less than what, because the original estimates, when I know this came up a few years ago for the boardwalk and included all that green space. Yeah. And those estimates in the 2009 study were a little over... You do a little over twenty-three thousand. That included all the green space. Yeah. This would not. Right. Um, and I'm I'm working to get those figures from BGS. I mean, there's a little bit down past between the gazebo and the dock. There's yeah. a little green space, but not much. But mostly. those those maintenance figures were, are within a reasonable amount that, as we develop a revenue stream, should be covered. And this is part of the work. 
you know, as we get another person in the community who will be working on the recreational economy, this is part of the work to set up businesses and other opportunities to, to generate these kind of revenue streams so that it, we're not looking at taxpayer money to do everything. So. That's my concern. Yeah. And we were talking like the grant is guaranteed. Are there other people applying for this grant? Oh, yes. It's a very so, competitive so, grant. So it really isn't guaranteed, right? No. No, no okay. it's not guaranteed. So so when uh, if the legislature gifts us the property, can we, make, can we make that contingent on the grant? Well, no, it, they already know. I mean, my meeting, I can tell you, my meeting with the governor basically flat out said that I don't want any, any local taxpayer money going to repair it. And he knows very clearly that if we don't receive this grant, we're not accepting the boardwalk. So it's, yes, it's a good point. The, the actual gift could not be made until the grant is awarded and the notice to proceed goes forward. So you're right, you're covered, because yeah. without the grant, there's no way to manage those repairs. Yeah, I'm just going to so, yeah. Now you talk about all these other facilities. Almost yes. all the land on it is public along the waterfront uh, over at the... Are, are we going to try to create things that's going to take business away from the marina and the existing businesses? Or? I think this will actually draw business, draw more business in. Um, and I wish the harbor master was here to talk because he spoke this afternoon quite eloquently about, you know, what the potential is for drawing in different kinds of watercraft. So, and also setting up business for rentals um, down in that waterfront. Well, one example is um, the farmer the family is going to be installing two docks this week along the seasonal walking path. Yeah. Yeah, and one of those is for um, short-term stopping, so boats can come in and, and shop for their essentials and leave. And the other one is more for public access to allow um, Nathan at the Great Outdoors to allow his customers to test drive his equipment. Yeah. So it's a great. That's great. the model that we're we're looking for. Other questions from anyone? Any idea how much revenue could be generated from the flooring and such? Um, Jim has some ideas, but his, I, I say but because he has a phased plan. And um, I think if he was fully phased in, and that would take several years um, at our current rates, I mean, he's done some analysis, um, it, would, it would more than cover what we expect would be our costs in maintaining that. I hesitate to say any numbers. Um, he would be the person to do that. So his his overall concept is to increase the number of what he calls transient moorings. And that would be um, uh, in front of, between the gateway and the pavilion. And I believe there's a little more room by the boardwalk, although not a lot because that's part of the fairway. Um, there's uh, an approved mooring field over near the Bluffside Farm. And that was why we had included the Bluffside Farm in our initial discussions about this, because we thought there was opportunity for them as well. But again, we're talking phased in. Yeah. You know, we're, we're looking at um, opening up access to the water for everybody. And that was actually one of the criteria of the Vermont Housing Conservation um, Board's funds that we accepted. So all of this effort in the Bluffside Farm is to is to find new, innovative, and entrepreneurial ways to take advantage of our waterfront. I, you know, I I was involved with the mooring management years and years ago, mm -hmm. and one of my problems is the city of Newport is lake poor, and really the mooring management plan that finally came out turns the lake that's in Newport into a parking lot. And it doesn't provide local access anymore. It's just a parking lot for people to park their boats. And if you want to use the lake, you've got to leave the waters. And pretty much, you've got to go to Canada to use the lake. It eliminates the fishing that people do along the shores. So I think we have to be careful when we say, we've got all these places where boats can moor. And we want to moor more boats. And if you went and you looked at Lampasaki, one of the battles they've been having is eliminated these <laughs> moorings so people have access to their lake. So I hate to see what little lake we have within the city limits turn into a parking lot for boats. Well, right now you don't have access to the lakes. 
and turning it into a parking lot seems like an extreme analogy. If you, look, if you not, look at the Morin management plan, we're not and you look at, where they put them. We're not looking at turning it into a, a parking lot. We're looking at gaining access so more people can use it, and we're looking at enhancing entrepreneurial experiences. Okay. I have a different opinion. Okay, anything else? Then we would need a motion to um, approve this resolution if the council so chooses. I'll make that motion. The motion's been made. Is there a second? Made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion to approve the resolution? Then. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I just have a question. If the city, if you get your grant and you get the boardwalk, the green space is not going to be included. So then the state still can limit access to vendors on their portion. They can. Uh, right now, the city is also leasing the green space this summer. So while I can't speak to what the intent is, the overall intent for the state is to have this piece of property more usable for the city because they recognize the value for both the waterfront and for the community. So this summer, the city is able to lease that property for four months, the green space, from June 1st through September 30th. So anyone who wants to do events on that space or enjoy it goes to the city, not the state. This is an acquisition piece for the boardwalk. Whether there would be an acquisition piece for the green space in the future, it's certainly a question um, that, that could come up. Okay. One, one follow-up. How much is it costing us for the four months rental? $2,000. But it's costing NCRC. Yeah, the downtown organization is, is putting that okay. up. That's a lot less than what they originally wanted. They wanted Lake. They wanted. Was it? They wanted Lake Champlain rates, and we said this isn't Lake Champlain. They, they wanted, I think, fifteen hundred a month versus <laughs> five hundred, and we said, wait a minute, this is Newport, and so and they dropped it way down. And so, any other questions? Then, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. The ayes have it. I guess. I said I. You can look at me again. Oh, no, 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 no. I just, I didn't, did you say I? I said I. Okay, I didn't. I was just trying to. You could have seen an awful quiet eye. I <laughs> consider that. I didn't get to hear it. Very good. So we'll let the. Uh, we'll make an amendment to the application with the new resolution. And it doesn't mean we're going to receive the grant. Does it? It looks looks good, but it doesn't mean we'll receive it. It's certainly a very competitive application. Let's put it in and stress again. Everyone knows if we don't, if it's not fixed, we're not taking it. It doesn't. Right. Nothing to the password. Thank you all very much. That's, Thank you. Yeah. start on the right. Oh, well, I just go to the president and then whatever. I don't know. I, I can go that way. It would be more efficient. I guess, but I just do it the way I do it. Is it really hard? I know it does. Okay. More, more paper. Thank you. More paper. The next one is the fair housing policy. We really do not need to have any vote on this because there's no change to the resolution. It was listed by mistake. It was listed as needing to be updated and it did not need to be updated. So the policy that is in effect as of what, the, what was the date on the, is still in effect. So we don't even need to have a vote or anything on it. I think it was 2000. Yeah. And so. So I just wanted to have that. Since we said we were going to have it on this agenda, we don't have to change anything regarding that. Okay. 
The next item would be new business, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Sherman? No. Ms. Rabona? No. I don't have anything. Mr. Schneck? Yes, on uh, Block Road, where the city repaired a open pipe, there are holes that are starting again and potholes that need to be filled. Feel free to call me anytime. Okay. And I can do that so, so these types of things um, can be addressed. Okay. That's it. Anything new? Any new business? No, thank you. Old business, Mr. Johnson? No. Mr. Sherman? No. no. Is your woman? No. Um, going old business, I guess, could have been new or old, is the, we received the budget update for her. Mm -hmm. And I had a couple questions. It's more on the, I guess it was on the, the revenue side. If we hadn't received anything from corrections as far as pilot. Does that do in? I haven't built them yet. Oh, you haven't built them yet? Oh, okay. I was just curious on that. And then, what's the state municipal tax adjustment? I don't think I've seen that one before. Has it been there? That's something to do with the homestead. Is that the homestead? Oh, okay. I was just curious because we hadn't budgeted anything and all of a sudden it's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's that? We don't buddy because we don't know what we're getting. We don't know what we're getting. It's just all oh, okay. I was just that's all I had. I was just curious on it. Did you have questions, Mr. Schnett, on the budget? No, well mine's very minor. I can address mine later. Oh, okay. All right. That's all I had. Any old business? No. Any old business? Anything? No, thank you. All right. The next uh, council meeting will be Monday, June 18th, 6 30 p.m. And the next Centennial Planning Committee meeting will be June 7th at 5 p.m. And we need a motion to adjourn at 7.25. So moved. Motion made. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded. Discussion? Yeah. Yeah. All, yeah. Those in, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion. Is that you? Yeah. <laughs>